the Revisionary Podcast with your host, Juan Carlos. The Revisionary Podcast. How can we fundraise in a way that's unofficial? Those were the last words of the last episode. And I'm really sorry that I left you guys on such a cliffhanger, but I wanted to make sure that you came back. So if this is the first episode you're listening to, this is part two of our conversation with Gaston Almonte. Please go back and listen to part one so that you're not confused and you're not lost as to what's going on. I'm also going to assume if you're listening to this episode, then you already know that this is the Revisionary Podcast, and I'm your host, Juan Carlos. And this is a podcast where guests come on and tell us a nonfiction story about their lives in which they wish something had gone a little bit different. Afterwards, I give them an opportunity to retell the same exact story, but they can change any details or facts about the story that they want, and we discuss the impact. This is part two of You Got Tim's Hide Keys? With Gaston Almonte. So please, please, please go listen to part one if you haven't already. And if you haven't already, pause this and take a moment. And please go give us a review on Apple Podcasts. It's really important to the podcast. It's how we grow. It's how other people can see that this is an awesome podcast that you guys all love. And thank you again for tuning in and listening. I really appreciate you guys, the revisionaries. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get Gaston back on the line and finish the story. Let's find out what happens next. We got the basketball court, B. Um, we could do events here from 9 to 2 like we're doing already. We just got to charge at the door. Say it's a fundraiser. I was like, you for real? He's like, yo. He's like, we got people coming here five days a week anyway. We got two days. Nobody comes to the courts. Use them two days to fundraise. We use the other five days to promote the fundraiser. And I was like, yo, A, if you were a white kid in suburbia, you would have such a great future in like a Fortune 500 (laughs) company. That is brilliant shit. Like you were completely right. That is exactly, you are, you are, you figured out how to market to the target demo, everything. This is, this is a full breakdown. I love this idea. So, um, I was like, all right, so what kind of event can we do? He's like, all right, well, what are things that we like to do on Saturdays, um, that, you know, would entice this area? So, we put up a fundraiser that was, I forget the fight, but we hosted a fight night at St. Mike's. And that was literally the name because it rhymed. It was like fight night at St. Mike's. Mm-hmm. Know what I mean, so we hosted the fight. So we bootlegged the HBO shit, had the fight showing on four different screens in the gym. We hosted a poker tournament during the freaking fight so that you could fight, you could play cards. Before the main event, you were gambling we a, in church, dude. Dude, son. So you had a, <laughs> we had twenty five percent of the of the poker pool went to the to the fundraiser. The other seventy five percent went to the players. Then uh, we had we had drinks. Like I brought in like a like yo, my homegirl was like y'all. I'm a bartender. And in retrospect, she definitely wasn't a bartender. She mixed like four drinks in her life, but she. <laughs> Yo, she, <laughs> but she was back there. So she was, she was mixing shit. We were selling drinks and like legit, we had a full on gambling event at the church to raise money for a church event. Wow. Um, I, I can I brought hear your out, soul sizzling as you're telling me the story. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel, but again, all of this was with good intention, right? right so right. like this was to raise money for a valid church thing to send people that were already committed to going that might have came up short the rest of the way. So I still I still feel like I'm in the good here. Like <laughs> if you weighing it out, it's like 60-40. Right. You know what okay. I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so like we we legit like we sold it. People had to pay money to come in. We had a DJ playing. We had seats set up so you could see the fights. You got two calm drinks. And you got to buy the rest of your drinks the rest of the night. Only people that got free drinks were people that also bought into the poker tournament. Poker tournament had like 60 players. So you had to buy in separately into the tournament. So me, my boy Heck, my boy Jeff, we doing this. A few other people help out. I'm not going to say their names because they got regular jobs now. But it's, uh, (laughs) it's, it's a success. Like, we realized we opened the doors at like 1030. We waited a little bit later that day because we wanted to make sure everybody was out the church. Uh, we opened up the doors at 1030. I want to say by noon, we realized that our cut was going to be like five grand. That's like real bread. Like we could send people to, to, right. to, to Europe. You know what I mean? So we're happy. This is a win. 
right? So now we just got to make sure the night goes well. People are playing. Everyone's doing their thing. Um, we had a balance giving liquor so that people could drink and have a good time. By the same token, not, you know, lose their temper because we do know there's real money here now. And as dope as this is, I'm not security. I'm not stopping 50 people fighting me for bread, you right. know? So we had like shit set up like, uh, uh, um, every like a uh, half hour upstairs, somebody would make a run to my crib with the money so that the money wasn't even in the church anymore, just in case, uh, we got robbed. So that was the plan. Like, I bet starting at midnight, any bread that we get this for the trip, we're going to start driving it to G's house every half hour so that if somebody, if something does pop off the bread ain't here. So we even had like foresight. I was like, all right, cool. We're trying to plan this out intelligently. You know, and it, this is only because like we'd seen Ocean's Elevens way too many times. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> so like we're like, all right, no, nobody jacking us and shit. So we're good. So we turning up, we partying. Everybody's having a great time. Fights are going good. Card game is going well. People getting their drinks. I'm legit happy. We was getting so cocky. We even ordered like Chinese food. Like we was like, <laughs> hey, yo, my man, so it's coming up to St. Michael's. They're like, this closed. Like, yo, trust me, it's open. You just don't know yet. <laughs> like, the show, I promise you someone's at the door. So, like, uh, we're doing all of this. It's like around, like, 12, 15. We about to do the, we about to, we setting up to do the first run of uh, uh, money out to, uh, out, out to my crib. And uh, my boy Jeff, uh, who was DJing um, on the stage, because this, this is a school gym, right? You got a full basketball court. But it also doubles as the biggest like auditorium. So they would put out chairs and there was like a stage. Uh, so he was on the stage with my DJ speakers, my like DJ turntables, all that shit. He's turntabling, mixing songs for the party, setting up the mood. I notice he sets it up on like autoplay for like five songs and sneaks off. So I think he's going to mess with his chick. So he goes to like the back. He's, he's doing his thing with the chick. I don't see any of this, but, you know, that's what I'm assuming is happening because I see the music playing. He's not there. And I'm feeling good overall, but I also felt like this is too easy. Right. And I felt like right when that tension hit me, like uh, this is going way too well. Your right? New York senses started tingling. <laughs> yeah. Like, I was like, this is too easy. Like this is because like at the, there was like at like uh, by like 12 o'clock. I was feeling so good that like me and Hector was like, yo, this should just be our jobs. Why don't we just do this? Every <laughs> you know what I mean? Let me just bring in five G's every week. We can just do this all the time, B. Right. So like we felt way too good about this. And the other reason I know we were good people is because we were all like doing this from a genuine non-greed place. Like nobody was like, we, like nobody was like, what's my cut? Like it was legitimately raising funds for this. So it felt dope. Anyway, I felt way too comfortable and I knew that that was bad. So I'm talking to Hank. I'm like, yo, we got to, let's start moving the bread. Let's start setting up for that. Um, we're going to wrap this up at like two o'clock. We set up the, if you know about poker, we set up the Annie's to go up at a, at a pace that the tournament would end by like one thirty. We thought the fight would be over by one o'clock. And I figured between one, one and two, we could start slowly kicking everyone out. Two thirty, we clean up, we close up. So I'm like, yeah, let's start putting that in action from now. Maybe we can even get some of the people that's knocked out to leave instead of uh, taking free drinks. And as I'm saying that, like me and Hector are talking out the plan to do that. We bring over my boy Drew to drive over the bread. And Drew's like, you need me to drive? He's like, yeah. And he's looking, we're, we're talking on the balcony area, looking over the courts. And Drew's like, yo, I think Jeff needs you. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Jeff is with his chick. He's like, nah, Jeff is waving at me. And I look over, he's like, Gastor, get over here. Come down, come down. So like, I'm like, all right, all right. And he's like, nah, now, now he's waving me. So I'm not reacting at the pace that now I realize it should have and that Jeff clearly needed me to. So Jeff runs up the stairs and says, I'm not doing what I need to do. Jeff runs up to the three of us and he's like, we need to leave now. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, I can't explain. But I've been breaking into this church for years, as you guys have as well, with this basketball thing of late. I can tell you one thing for sure. Um, I don't know how. I just know what it sounds like when it does. And we set off the alarm. So we got to leave because without question, there's going to be a cop here within five minutes. And like we were like, oh, shit. And mind you, like, 
again, we're technically not doing anything super grimy, but we've def crossed the line where like, even if a priest showed up and saw me, I'm not winning this discussion, right? right. Like, <laughs> you know, so I felt like that's kind of, that was where like, if, if you would have caught me last week with the basketball thing, I felt like a priest would have been mad, but they would have, I could have talked my way out of that. I can't talk my way out of this. Right. I definitely can't talk my way out the cop game here first. Like I'm, I'm losing. I don't know what I'm in jail. And then I'm explaining to the priest what right. I did wrong. So we're like, what the fuck are we going to do? So we make an announcement. We're like, listen, we have to pause the tournament temporarily. Everybody's like, what are you talking about? We're like, we had to, we got two tables left, B. We almost wrapped. We, it's just getting intense. And we're like, cops are showing up in five minutes. Everybody's like, say no more. Like everyone instantly understood. Like, Got it. Like, yeah, we with you. So thankfully, the main event of the fight wasn't starring yet. Nobody put up an issue about that. We turned off all the TVs. Uh, Jeff goes on the stage, pushes my DJ equipment back, closes the curtains so that if you show up, you don't see the DJ equipment on the stage. We uh, we uh, hand out Ziploc bags and tell everybody, put your poker chips in the bags so that we could know where you are at and we could pay you out accordingly based on where you are currently in the tournament. And we start rolling these like huge church uh, fucking tables all against one wall. We're like, listen, we can't put them away, but if we could at least roll them to the same place, it'll look organized so that it'll look like somebody was setting up for something, right? But if we leave all this shit out like a mess, it's gonna look crazy. We do all that, we run, uh, we run up to the counter and we and we hear the five zero the 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 sirens uh, pulling up to the front of the the church hall so that we can't walk out through there. So Jeff is like, I know the way. So Jeff leads us through. Jeff has lived across the street from the church his whole life, and he snuck in and out of church for basketball and other shit apparently all the time. So he knew like the tunnel system and all of that. So he's like, I'm gonna lead y'all out this way. So we went from through the church hall underneath the church and we came out through like the school side right so we come out on the other side of the block and then we walk to my homegirl's crib uh i don't know if she would want her name in it so i'm gonna just leave that blank yeah. so we're we all stand in front of her crib and we are like we're like what's the plan we're like all right we're just gonna look like every other suspicious group that's out at this time of night you know what i mean <laughs> so like if somebody talks to us at least it's in character of east new york yeah. you know so we're all hanging out here and we see the cops go into the church. They're looking around and stuff. They coming out. I even see one dude like holding like plastic cups and shit. He's like, I don't know what the fuck this all is. We couldn't put away all the drink shit, but overall it didn't look like anything crazy. It just looked like there was a party. And the, uh, I see them call the, I see them making phone calls. I find out later they were talking to the priest. So I see them making phone calls. Uh, I said, boss, I, I hit him on the walkie. We're here now. Nothing's going on. And they hanging out. They're pacing back and forth. I go up to my boy, Mark. And uh, something I should say about Mark. Um, Mark is my friend from high school. I went to high school in uh, prep school in Queens. Mark is not of this world at all. And Mark knew that we were trying to raise funds. So Mark was nice enough to invite four of his friends who were less of this world than he was. Got it. So we got like maybe 20, 30 people from East New York and Brownsville and four Asian kids from Floral Park, Queens. Okay. And they are very nervous about this whole <laughs> dynamic, you know? Yeah. But to their credit, they are also exceptional poker players. So they do not want to leave because they are also doing very well in the tournament. Mm -hmm. They're like, yo, like we got chips, like we doing good, but also like, I don't want to die today over this poker tournament. You know what I mean? But we're all hanging out. I'm like, yo, just lay low. We here. Anybody ask you dating a chick from here now. You good. Don't even worry about it. So we all chilling. And I see the cops like trying to figure it out. They stumped. I see them look over across the street and they see our admittedly the biggest group that's hanging out outside is ours. But we are not the only group that's hanging out outside. So they look at our group and I know like their, their cop instinct is like, they dev did this shit. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Cause they stayed at us way too long. They're like, I don't know what, I don't know how, but they, they involved, but they can't pinpoint it. Cause there's other groups of people in the neighborhood chilling outside too. 
Um, so they looking at us, they looking at some other squads, and I see like I see like some dude like wave over a couple of the cops to make like the rounds. So like a cop walks by us and he's like, Hey, you know what y'all been up to? And we like, Yo, we just been kicking it here. He's like, true, true. All right, y'all have a good night. He keeps walking. He goes to the other side of the street. He talks to like a group of like five to ten people chilling. And he, they don't get they, they obviously don't give him nothing either. So they he walks back to the front of the church and they talk it over and they're like, yo, it is what it is. Just keep it moving. And they went off. <laughs> so we looked at each other. We were like, yo, we got away with this shit. Like, yeah, yeah. Let's go finish this tournament. Word, word. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So we go back inside. We played for like another half hour. Everybody was hyper aggressive now. Like they felt high on life. You right. know, like they survived some shit. So hey, when we go back in, the first like four hours of the tournament was intense. Now everybody was like, I'm all in. I'm all in. More drinks. So everybody's on a, on a whole new level of life. Uh, tournament ends in like 15 minutes, but we party for like another hour. Yeah, we had a, a good time. We got we we had a a fun night, and we were able to send uh, three people uh, to uh, Europe along with myself and uh, my now wife. So it was, uh, in my opinion, well worth it. Wow. So yeah, that's uh, my story. I that's realize an incredible I'm, story. Yeah. So okay, so now we're gonna do a condensed version of this. Yeah, I um, talk. You let me talk. I'm gonna talk. Now nah, I love it. I love it. So what would you have done differently? So, in retrospect, uh, if I could do it over, so I feel like uh, me and Hector were unchecked ambition, <laughs> right? Like, uh, <laughs> right. We <laughs> I, every time I think of like that moment when me and Hector decided to host a casino fight night at at St. Mike's, I realized that. Uh, we should have had more adult input of like uh, adults with like repercussions in their life. Like we were grown ups legally, but like you know what I'm saying. Like you needed yeah. like, you needed a parent, like someone that's like, yo, or you can ruin your life. Yeah, <laughs> like you needed me today. <laughs> that would have been like I get you. I would have understood, but I also would have been like, nah, but you gonna fuck up your life because we just got lucky. Is really what it right. comes down to, you know, like. It, needed, it was the perfect storm of Jeff being there and knowing how to get out. Um, and legit, I can't stress enough. We probably beat them by like 30 seconds because even the side we came out on, cops ended up like going around the block like because they know the whole church, right. is, the whole block is theirs. If I could do it over, the main thing I would change is that combo with me and Hector. I, I'd put up a bigger front in terms of what would be a good idea to raise funds and probably figure out like a different usage of the church. Like I, I might've done like a basketball tournament if I could do it over where like, you know, they would have incorporated the same group of people, the same energy. They was already doing it there. Right. So like we could have met up on it, Admittedly, it would have raised less money because they're already playing ball. Right. But like it could have been like a bragging rights thing. And it's something that we thought of afterward when we started like hustling the kids in Queens, but like we could have done like a basketball tournament, invited people. Yo, everybody come in. Put in your bucks for your squad. A quarter of it goes to the fundraiser. Winning team keeps the, all, all the other money. You know what I mean? And we would have got like way less money, but still a substantial amount of money. And more importantly to me, it was a uh, easier cleanup, right? Like if 5-0 shows up, it's just right. bread and basketball players. Um, no alcohol involved. Uh, no DJ equipment and cabling systems connecting right. four televisions to the one cable box that we could bring in <laughs> that was hooked up. So we needed that one to be the one. Uh, yeah, it just, it would have made a lot of that easier. And um, more importantly, uh, would have took a lot of the gray area out. So here's the thing, right now you got away with it, but let's not look past the fact that knowing nothing about the people who you sent to Italy it, this could have been a life changing trip for someone. Maybe an opportunity, a once in a lifetime opportunity for them. Yeah, and, and and that's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like overall, like we did the right thing. We did the great, the greater good. And I can't stress enough. Like, everyone that showed up knew the purpose. Like, there was no griminess. There was no hustle. Like, we're here to raise funds for this trip. And I found that beautiful that that many people were committed to it. Um, a ton of people that being frank knew they couldn't go still showed up because they knew that it would help someone else go. Um, knowing that ironically in order to send someone, they were probably breaking three laws, 
you know, but it was, uh, it was cool to like, see like a block come together to kind of help somebody out, um, and do that. And yeah, I'm, I'm still proud of the organization, the togetherness, um, even the out of towners, my boy, Mark, like that's still my dude to this day. That's my, my, my daughter's godfather. Like he that, down. that day, like for real, like I realized like, yo, this dude's really like riding that shit. Cause yeah. he could have bounced on us like easy and been more than justified. Um, and he chilled with us the whole time and he went back in and played. I think he finished in the money. The dude <laughs> made, you know what I mean? Like, uh, he saw, he saw um, the value of being a part of the moment and also helping this group do what they were doing. Either that or he was just really into poker. I don't know. Like he might, <laughs> he might just have a gambling problem. <laughs> okay. But like, yeah, I just thought that was dope. And I valued people being willing to uh, go above and beyond for uh, people's potential. Okay. So normally I would ask you uh, what the long-term effects are, but I think we've kind of covered that. <laughs> yeah, so- I, I think we have, yeah. Instead, I'm going to move on a little bit, and uh, I didn't tell you that I was going to ask you this. I like to catch people off guard sometimes. Uh, okay. Could you tell us a quick story from your childhood that uh, you know brings a smile to your face, or just like a general happy memory, or something that just makes you feel good inside whenever you think of it? <laughs> this ain't happy enough, me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm greedy. I want another. <laughs> uh, my uh, godfather, Domingo, uh, he lived upstairs... Uh, from me growing up and uh, he had like a real like silly personality. He's the reason that I realized that adults could be funny um, and be clowns. Um, what he would do is uh, he had like this little like office underneath the house um, that he kept all his supplies in. He was like a mechanic and shit. And uh, the other thing he kept there was firecrackers. So he wouldn't tell anybody and he would just randomly uh, put like M80s and shit under your chair and they would like fucking make you deaf. <laughs> like, <laughs> and he would just, and exactly what I just did now, like just to laugh, he yeah. would laugh in your face <laughs> right after it blew up and it hurt so much because you, you felt the energy of the laugh, but you couldn't hear it because you were deaf <laughs> from the m <laughs> So you just feel like the air, like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> but yeah, he did that for years, man. And like, I, I, uh, I, I grew to appreciate, uh, July 4th so much, uh, because it became like an unofficial holiday of him. You know, he, uh, he would do it, um, every time there was a family gathering, anytime we did a barbecue out front, um, and, uh, genuinely Mr. Dude passed away, uh, like five years ago, um, Super like a uh, human athlete, really athletic, did all the construction work for that first home um, that I not only lived in from age four to 12, but uh, it was the first home that my parents uh, co-bought with uh, him and my godmother. Uh, so when me and my wife uh, got married and had our first kid and didn't have money, uh, it's also the first apartment I moved into as a married man. So my first bedroom in an apartment was also my daughter's first bedroom. So like I I uh I'm really attached to like the memories of that building and it was just dope to uh every time I like July 4th came at that house uh I would not only like remember that but also like I'd tell my daughter and my son like the story of this and uh you know they were incoherent they barely remember it they were way too young for that shit but uh it was just cool to kind of like sit out front July 4th with them and see the fireworks and remember what it was like to be a little kid on that block uh going deaf with my godfather i think first off i think that's a beautiful story uh one last thing before i let you go i i know you put this out a a little bit ago now it's some time has passed but you did put out an album so i just wanted to give you an opportunity to you know talk about it and let's keep people listening to it keeping it in the forefront oh i appreciate that man yeah um i worked on uh album slash independent special uh it's called immigrant made um the special can be streamed on amazon prime uh free if you have an amazon prime membership and uh yeah it's just me telling a bunch of funny stories that uh uh, show the journey of my family essentially like you get to see what it was like for my grandfather when he first came here what it was like for me and my father um and our dynamic as i was growing up and a little bit of me and my son um so yeah it was just it, it's a story that kind of shows to me the whole american dream of 
what can happen within a timeline of one man's life uh before and after um so yeah uh it's it's a really special project to me that you know i hope people enjoy and they also find funny and you know that'd be cool uh, but yeah, I, I hope people get to check it out. It is uh, streaming, like I said, for free on Amazon Prime. And you can hear the album uh, anywhere the albums are streaming. Immigrant Made. And where can we follow you? Uh, you can follow me on all social medias at Gastor Almonte, G-A-S-T-O-R-A-L-M-O-N-T-E. Um, by the time this comes out, you will also have uh, heard my new podcast with Shalewa Sharp, The War Report. Um, we, uh, I got to show you the cover. Uh, uh, I don't know if you've ever, uh, seen Capone and Noriega's old album cover, the war report. We remade the cover with me and Shalewa. So, uh, it might be a little before your time, but it is a lot of fun to shoot. So I'll send you that. You're a young man. I got, I got, I got to plug you on that too. Let the industry know my man Juan got time. Y'all can invest in him. He's got a long career ahead of him. He's not an old man like me. You know what I mean? Even though, you know, I don't, I don't know how much different we might be the same age. Dominic, I, I can't tell with Dominicans at all. You could be like my nephew or my grandfather. I, I don't know what, you know, what, uh, <laughs> oh man. But yes, uh, immigrant made, uh, at Gastor Almonte and, uh, Shalewa Sharp and I hosting uh, The War Report. And then the last thing is, uh, is there any last words you want to leave our revisionaries with before I let you go? Yeah. Um, the main thing I could say that I've learned from uh, being a stand-up and from telling stories and from living fun stories. Everybody always asks is, yo, Gas, you, had, you got crazy stories, B. Um, and that's because I say yes to mad shit. You know, like um, I, I really believe in that, like philosophy. I, I want to experience things. I feel like it enriches life and I get to have really dope things happen. And then every now and then when something goes wrong, I got a dope, you know, set out of it. And I get paid anyway. You know what I mean? I let, I let, I let my boy Joey, my boy Tuve, I lent them $180. Was it a smart idea? No, but I've made way more than $180 for of the streaming rights from that album from the track that I talk about it on. So you see what I'm saying? It comes back full circle. Live the moments, do the experiences, and it pays off, people. But you're still trying to get that 180 because I know yeah, you I want that 180. Now. You know what I mean? <laughs> Try to pay twice, B. He owes me the 180. <laughs> now I mean not Spotify. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for coming on to the show. Real pleasure, my G. Take care, homie. Keep spreading the love out there too, man. I want I want to hear about like the the third and fourth Dominican in in that whole state ever. It's like you and whoever's played for the Mariners. There's no others. <laughs> All right, man. Later. <laughs> Take care, bro. Peace. The Revisionary Podcast. The craziest thing about that is that Gaston was out here really dealing religion, like. He ran a whole scam and used the church to do it. That is wild to me. Like, I can't even wrap my head around it. But I guess he did it with the best of intentions. So that almost makes it not bad, right? I mean, at the end of the day, playing basketball is a positive experience for most people. Like, And it, he was making the streets safer, so I give him that. Also, Tim's as fobs? Is that a thing that people are doing? Because if it is, I need to hop on that. Well, anyway... I want to thank you again for listening. If you haven't subscribed to the podcast, please go ahead and do so. Make sure you're following us on Instagram and on Twitter. And make sure you like us on Facebook. Also, make sure you follow, subscribe, and rate us anywhere that you're listening to us. As always, we like to pick a charity or an organization to throw our support behind on this podcast. For this episode, Gaster has actually selected Cypress Hills Local Development, which is a community organization that provides resources for residents of East New York. So go ahead and please support Gastor. This is the-